Today's episode of The Mom Game is brought to you by our friends at Gateway Buick GMC at LBJ and Jupiter. I know that buying a car can be stressful, but not at Gateway because their slogan is Gateway's Got It. And just what does that mean? Well, it means Gateway's got a wide selection of new Buicks, GMCs, and GM certified used vehicles, all competitively priced. Gateway's Got It. In these busy times, you want a car dealer who makes things easy and convenient? Well, Gateway's got it. When you log on to gatewaybuickgmc.com, look for the shop, click, drive button. This allows you to shop from the comfort of your home, and who doesn't want that? In fact, it's easy as one, two, three. One, select your vehicle. Two, create your offer. Three, schedule your delivery. And on top of all this, Gateway Buick GMC offers complimentary car washes for life. So when you want a dealer who has it all, Gateway's got it. You can find them online at gatewaybuickgmc.com or shop in person at LBJ and Jupiter. GMC, we are professional grade. Experience the new Buick. And welcome into episode 38 of The Bomb Game. Emily Jones, Julie Dobbs, and our friend Chris Budden here to uh, join the mom game fun. Yes. We're so excited to have you. Thanks. I'm excited to be here. Like the, the connection that I have I with know. both of you is so completely distant. I know Emily from when I was covering Major League Baseball and Julie and I were sorority sisters <laughs> yeah. at Mizzou, which is why I wore the Mizzou shirt. I tried love to find it. a Kyle or it. Dio I shirt. I feel right at home right <laughs> now. And you know, I was a Kyle also. I didn't know that. Yes. You what? Ky- Ky- I didn't oh, know I can't that. say it. It's secret. It's secret. It's <laughs> secret. I was going to say secret. Handshake. Kyle yeah. words. Remember the handshake? Uh-huh. Yeah. I remember, no, COVID, you can't do it. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. You can't say it. Yeah, Darn. you can't say it. I rarely get to do the Kayo handshake. I know. I remember it, though. Um, so, yes, this is a big show for us. And thank you to Gateway Buick GMC for all of their love. So, I was driving by um, to the place where I play tennis off 635, and I'm driving by. I see Gateway Buick GMC, the car dealership. It's yeah. beautiful. I look off to my side and I do like a double, oh, triple take, no. almost veer off the road. You're on a billboard. So what? Oh my God. <laughs> and so every time, it's it's really hard for me to actually see it. Like I, I strain my neck and yeah. I try to not like swerve the car, but I have confirmed after like seven trips that Emily's on a billboard outside of the unstable. car dealership. Very <laughs> unstable. Yeah. And you've never told me that. No, and it's, no, no. There's a reason. Um, There's it's quite a, a treat to just be driving yeah. along with my kids and uh-huh. see that like once a week ish yeah. now. Yeah. But no, they are awesome to uh, be on board with us on the show. Sweet. I know they're so supportive of you yeah. and everything that you're doing. So a big shout they're out to awesome. them. A big shout out to Emily being on a billboard. Chris, have That's you ever been on a billboard? I have and it was oh, after, and my tell. no my first job in Charlottesville, Virginia. So like imagine um when you were 22 in local news and trying to look way older than you actually were. Oh, so I had, had like the haircut. The worst <laughs> and like a suit like a brown suit jacket on. You're professional. Yep. Uh and that will live um in a in a box, a picture of it that will never be seen. Yeah. Did yeah. you have like the bad TV haircut? I did. Like, Cuz I was so told like you can't have long hair in TV. You won't be taken nope. seriously and I'm like Shit, I guess I'll chop it off. Yeah, and whatever you looked, say. And I looked awful. I was like, I looked terrible. Oh, yeah. My hair didn't move like yeah. the helmet hair. Yeah. Like so that like if you went outside and like a gust of wind came, like it would not. It was like, I don't even remember, like Aquanet or something yeah. or oh, got to Aquanet. be. Or like, yeah. <laughs> I think like the cheap version of it. Like Aquanet was cheap. that's all you could afford. But then there was a final net. <laughs> there was one called final net and it wasn't the aerosol. It was like the pump and it would get all sticky and crusty and on the pump spray. These are the things I remember. Mm. My husband looks back. We didn't know each other then. He lo- And he was like, S- S- no one told you to change your hairstyle. And I was like, no, people were telling me to do my yeah. hair that way. And he was like, th- he, he like thinks he's the reason like I finally got a new look. Like he was like, oh. that's not good. <laughs> he <laughs> takes the credit yeah, for your does. career. Um, it is a very successful career. Thank and you. so for people yeah, who don't know about you, we have to backtrack and introduce you a little bit more. So Chris now does uh, sideline reporting for ESPN College Football and um, just and other past, stuff. Yes. I want to talk about all of the things. But just this past week, I saw you twice on games covering the Longhorns and the Aggies in one weekend. Um, so first of all, yes, we were sorority sisters a long time ago and I haven't seen you in person. I'm just so proud of you Thank you for everything that you've been able to do. Um, and I know it's been a long and winding road for you to get to this point. So if you want to perhaps just like briefly take us through the steps, um, that took you here to where you are now. Yeah. So short version. So we're in Dallas because I grew up here. I grew up in Frisco when it was 
one high school and one red light. Uh, went to Mizzou. Mm -hmm. First job in Charlottesville, Virginia. Next job, um, I spent six years in Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay, always sports? Always sports. Okay, because yeah. I did news did, for two yeah. years, so it was miserable. Okay, <laughs> no. go ahead. Um, I, that, that, I mean, granted in Knoxville, Tennessee, like sports is news all the time. Sure. But um, then moved over to Fox, like Fox National, I guess what we call it, and was doing the NFL on Fox and then paired that with the San Diego Padres. Um, did basically em Emily's role with the Padres for two years, moved over to college football, had my son Jace, moved over to ESPN, where I now, I think I've been with them four years, do college football, college basketball, college baseball. Um, and... Then three years ago, we moved to Dallas so that I could get free babysitting from my <laughs> it's worth, parents. It's worth the move. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so now, yeah, now we have two kids and um, full into a, a weird college football season for ESPN. Yeah. And what has it been like for you? So you've been enterprising too. I've been really proud of you. You've started a podcast as well, yeah. which has a, f a really super clever name that I love. Tell us about that and kind of what you've done to kind of piecemeal things within this crazy COVID time. Yeah, so when everything shut down, it was like pe people that don't work and don't do the job because they get joy out of it don't understand that. Like when all that gets taken away yeah. in March, it was like we wanted to do something. And Allison Williams and Molly McGrath and myself have been texting one night after a couple glasses of wine and we're like, let's do a show. And it started as a like same. a yeah same, same. <laughs> started as an internet show we get asked all the time about advice and your careers and it's hard to get back to people so we're like why don't we just do like a Facebook live show? we had no idea what we were doing we're like maybe we'll do Instagram live and then we figured out only two people can be on Instagram live so it was, it was a whole process of just technically trying to figure out how to do it um and then took a break for a little bit and then figured out how to make a podcast like literally googled podcast for dummies um and it's a sideline pass podcast and so it, it transitioned into the idea that every week something viral happens on a, on a in an interview or a sideline and pe you know people want to know the ins and outs of it like this past week it was sarah fuller the kicker for vanderbilt who we're going to have on on thursday so it was it was the idea of like the moments behind the moments um mm -hmm. brought to you by three women who are on the field every weekend and then you and you see all the things that that isn't aren't seen at home yeah because right? i remember so many of those things that necessarily wouldn't make it into a broadcast that I would see when I was working those college football sidelines or, you know, NBA sidelines that you, you don't have the opportunity yeah. to pass along and to have a longer form version of, you know, to, for you to be able to, to talk about those is a fun, is a fun thing. Yeah. And it's, it's like, like you said, like there's so many stories, like make the cutting room floor when there's a really great game. So it's sharing those stories, sharing how we found the story, sharing things that we wish we had differently. Like, Molly McGrath had the Northwestern game the other week when the whole little Reese Davis's thing came up and how she wished she would do her interview differently. And um, so like I've always learned so much from them. And then it's just been fun to for my ESPN colleagues that we only see once a year at a seminar to be able to do something weekly with them because we don't ever get to see them. And it's just a chance for us to learn and hang out and have fun and, and get to interview some of our colleagues. Yeah. It seems like there's a lot more, um, people are interested in a lot more now than just what's on the game and just the things that the sideline reporters are able to get into a game that fit it, fits the producer's needs. Right. Yeah. It's like, I have a lot more to offer. <laughs> like, there's a lot of stories that I can tell and in, in you three ladies, I've actually listened to a couple of them and just, you know, the chemistry and, and everything is great. And I feel like that's one of the reasons we wanted to do this too. It's like, we don't necessarily need to be put in a box all the time. Yeah. We can come out of our box and do whatever we want. So I love that and that you're doing well, that Well, this too. is why I'm so proud of you guys is that I was like, you know, there's so much that goes on more than just like what's on the field. Like Allison has a kid and Molly's pregnant. And so like, I always thought like I get asked all the time, like, how do you do both? And like, that's a really hard question to answer. And so the fact that you guys came up with this concept where you can talk about all those things, yeah. they're like, I don't ever talk about like my family life while I'm, you know, on Kyle, uh, you know, Kyle Field covering a game. So right. it's kind of a cool outlet of what you guys yeah. have done. And you yeah. could argue that more people are like, going through the same things you're going through as a mom yeah. than yeah. there are that are, you know, necessarily interested in a game every Saturday. So to be able to do both here is he, awesome. Here's what's weird is like my Instagram is a lot of my kids and a little bit of work and a lot of my kids because 
I always because say we're like, mom and yes. we're like in our face because every my day. kids don't need yes. a filter and I need a filter every day on Instagram, <laughs> right. so it's just easier to shoot you. <laughs> right. And so I'm like walking at Kyle Field this past weekend, and someone's like, "Hey, I love your Instagram. Your kids are so cute." And you don't realize that just like all these strangers are yeah. looking yes. at things of your kids until you're it's like, "Weird." Oh yeah. At one day, I'm sure they're gonna be like, "Can you not put me on that?" Oh are my your gosh. kids are close to that age. I'm Emily? Sh- not yet. I mean. They do question like what, or sometimes like Hattie's a huge ham. So she's like all about it. it. She's like taking a picture. (laughs) Um, But Henry's kind of like, oh, you know, mom, so annoyed, whatever. And so I've gotten to the point where like, if I'm taking a picture of the music, are you going to post it? And I'm like, if you don't want me to, I won't. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, whatever. Um, And so I kind of have started, especially with Henry. He's my super like sensitive um, weird, not weird. He's not weird, but he just is, he's very mature emotionally. Yeah. And so I, or I should say advanced emotionally, not necessarily mature all the time. And so I've started where I do like run stuff by him. Like, well, if you don't want me to post it, I yeah. won't like, you know, I'm not, I don't need likes that bad, yeah. even though it's funny as shit or whatever, you know? <laughs> well. I'm glad yeah. mine can't say anything about anything oh, I've just posted wait. at yeah. this point. Oh, I'm yeah, just like, Anna's bedhead every morning. I'm sure she's really excited about that. <laughs> I've gotten so much good feedback but about then, her bedhead. Yeah, I, I love the fact that it. you then brushed out your hair. Was it this morning? <laughs> Yesterday. It, it was, oh, holy cow. I've got some crazy ass hair. That's you what do. happens. Yeah, and that's where Anna gets it. Okay, insert that's producer note here. Please insert picture of, oh, do we? Ha- you have to send the picture of you. Self, so we can post I'll send, it. I'll send the picture yes, and please. I'll send Anna's picture. Ted, insert um, picture of Julie's Because mine has here. crazy hair, my daughter, but it doesn't come from me. I don't, I don't even think it comes from my husband. We have no idea where it comes from. Hmm. Mm. Well, and really? if someone has like that feature, you've got to show it off, yeah. right? Uh, like, yeah. I mean, it's fun. <laughs> and everybody, it's just a nice little laugh early in the morning is what I see it as. Yeah. One thing I wanted to ask you about and that I, we've talked about before, and I'm so proud of you for speaking out about it and telling your story about it. You hid like legit hit, which first of all, how you did this, I have no idea. Cause I'm not sure if you saw me when I was, seven, <laughs> I've never seen those pregnant. pictures from the Rangers. Ooh, they're, oh, they're out there. <laughs> um, you hit a pregnancy. Yeah. Like on purpose hit a pregnancy because why? Because of what I thought the image of my job was, mm-hmm. um, you you grow up in this thing of like women shouldn't be in sports. And then when women are in sports is because they're cute and they're pretty. And when you're pregnant, I felt anything but that. And I thought, Oh, automatically would make me old. Like Mm -hmm. that's what I thought. And so I was able to get around it because I, uh, my last thing on air with the Padres was like December after doing some shows. And then we moved to LA for my husband's job. So I wasn't scheduled to do stuff again until April. So I had like when I was super pregnant, I was off air anyways. because my, my kid was born in March. Um, but then I like interviewed at a place. It was funny. They were like, um, can you stand up so we can see what you would look like on air? Oh, no. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, when you're going through it the first time, it's like my, my body's changing and everything's weird. And now I look back on it and not that I'm ashamed. Like I was never ashamed of my son. I'm I'm. I wish I hadn't done that because I left San Diego and, you know, working for a team, you kind of become one with your viewers. They see you every night. You're in their homes. And I left that city, them not knowing this Mm -hmm. huge part of my life that changed. And so then when they saw it on social media after it happened, they're like, oh, we wish we had known. You know, I felt Mm -hmm. like I hid something. So by the time I had my daughter, I was like. Well, screw it. Everyone already knows I'm old. So who it. cares? You know, but I was proud of you for sharing that. Right. Like yeah. it was one thing for you to, first of all, it, it's so, it's so, I guess, crazy to think about how all of us approach different situations. Right. Cause we're in the same, we're all in the same boat. We're, we were in a very similar boat. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because I did IVF with Henry that I was just like so proud that I wore all the tight shirts and showed my belly. And like, it was like, you know, I wore a bikini when I was nine months pregnant because I was like, look at this baby. (laughs) I worked hard for this. I am so proud of this. We paid a lot of money for those (laughs) eggs to get fertilized. Like, what? I mean, I I remember voting on Hattie's name during a Ranger game. They put a graphic up and it was like, like, I am pregnant. What should Emily name her baby? And there was all of your different choices choices. And I was like, Ooh, I'm, I'm going option C. I got a text to vote. That's like that's funny. how, but, but everybody's different with the situation right. and you get
get different feedback from different bosses exactly. throughout your career, yeah. and it gets stuck in your mind. So I understand completely why. Yeah, you and have I felt just like think, you had to do right. That. And two, I just think it's all. It also feeds into that too. I mean, you're younger than me, though. You're, well, and this is what's strange is like that. That you had that mindset when I when even I I am younger by I don't know like th- two or three years. You, how old are you? So now you're gonna. I'm forty. <laughs> now she's gonna no. age shame you. 46. Just that's your. Morning. I'm thirty six. Yeah, I couldn't even remember. Seven years there older is, than there me. Is. Okay, it was coming. I knew it was coming. But my point is that <laughs> I, so I remember old. actually meeting you for the first time at the Rangers, and I was pregnant. And I remember being so freaking sick because it was so hot outside. Uh. And I was like in my first trimester and I remember asking you the, how do you do it all question? Um, Cause I super looked up to you and there weren't many that were moms and yeah. still doing it. Now there are. Yeah. Um, so because there were so few, I was like, you know, I didn't have anyone to be like, oh, this is okay. Like I'm a badass. I'm going to walk around and, and f- flop my belly, you know? So I, I, because there wasn't, now there's a big group of us, especially yeah. at ESPN. And so there's a little bit more of like a, a self-awareness. I also think that I wasn't comfortable in my own confidence of why I have my job. I didn't okay. have my job because I was pretty and, you know, I, I had it because I was smart and I was qualified. Mm-hmm. And it's a shame that I counted that so out. You questioned yeah. that. And that sucks. Yeah. But, but it happens. I mean, please, yeah. it happens. Um, and that's one of the great things about getting old because you're like, then it's there's no fucking way yeah. it's my look. I will say one thing. <laughs> like, let's be real. I've got to be good at this I'm job. Not, I must be slain. <laughs> I will say one other thing. Like, like, <laughs> not true. When you're pregnant, it's like, I don't know. I felt very personal about it. Like everything else in my life was yeah. so public. It was like, this is the one thing. Yeah. Like I don't, I hate, by the time I had my daughter, it was like, I would, I was on the road till I was 36 weeks and people would just come up and put and their say, hands on I me. Know. And I'm like, don't touch my belly. Like that's not okay. It's so weird. It's so it's weird. so weird. And like perfect strangers. I, Molly, who's pre- my, who's on our show, who's pregnant in 2020. I'm like, that's actually a good thing because people can't just that's come funny. up and touch you. <laughs> Yeah, like keep your yeah. But so like that was part of it too. It was like, this is my little thing with my family and my yeah. husband. This is one thing that we can keep private. So that was part of it too. Like pregnancies, I don't know for me, it's weird. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think everybody <laughs> handles pregnancy different for yeah. the love. For the love. I'm so glad to be done. Are y'all done? Oh, oh, y'all is done. everybody done? We're done. Oh, Cheers. Done. We just have to share <laughs> that moment because it's a really good Cheers. feeling. It's, it's like, I did it. Good feeling. We've got our kiddos. Oh, we you all are have like, a boy and a girl. Mm-hmm. Oh, we all do have a boy. And people, somebody was like, oh, it's so perfect. You have a boy and a girl. And I was like, I don't care if I had a monkey the second time nope. around. I it was, was the only, done. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Done. It was so my. I don't care if I birthed yeah. an octopus. I don't care. So it is like, we can't. My husband went and got the surgery and it is done. But I, and I remember flying back the day before he was supposed to have surgery and I was on a road trip and I think I just missed my kids and I was sitting on the plane crying oh, and no. I, I was like, maybe you should. Oh, maybe. no, 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 no. He's like, I think oh. you just missed the kids. Well, yeah. I'm going to have the surgery. I was like, I don't know. Cause then my mom was like, what if something happens to Landon? And I was like, what do you mean if something happens to Landon? I don't know. Replace her. Yeah. Like, no, stop. <laughs> I was like, that's why is, would you tell me that? Yeah. So I was like on a plane being like, is this the wrong decision? It's a weird feeling probably to yeah. just like something that's so concrete. And but I oh. always knew, but it was just like this Same. weird rush of emotions. Or like you can't have on that, a flight. Like, you know, you see the people who have like the accidental third, like seven years later and they're like, oh, it's F- such a blessing. The, no. <laughs> like, like, no. like we could never do that. That would be me I, having a baby right now. I would, you would die. die. You, you would, would probably have it. twins. I would like stop. that's what would happen. <laughs> or, good, or a monkey. Good news. I don't have fallopian tubes or a uterus. Okay. Or yeah. any of the other parts that it takes to make a baby. Yeah. I was so convinced that when Hattie, I had a C-section with Henry and Hattie. Hattie, when she we were in there and she, I told her, she said, it, my doctor said, if you want, you can take, I can cut your fallopian tubes out if you're sure you don't have kids. 10% of um, ovarian cancer or uterine cancer, some, some kind of cancer starts in the fallopian tubes. It'll just reduce your cancer risk by 10%. Yeah. I'm like, and. So we're, I'm laying there on the table. She's like, are you sure about that? I'm like, yep, real sure. And I'm like, I want to see him in the jar. Make sure I take him home. I don't did want you? that. I don't no, I didn't. I was okay. Well, cause that's for another time, but you know, I, have to, I have to have a um, hysterectomy coming up. So oh, it's the same right. thing. Cause, cause Kelly and I were kind of like back and forth. Well, what if, what if, what if? And then finally it's just like, you've got to make a decision yeah. because I am still high risk for ovarian cancer. And the doctors are like, do it. Get, get it out. Yeah. But I'm scared. Hysterectomy is awesome. I'm scared to have all that shit cut No, out. you're fine. And you know what the best part is? You get 24 hours in a hospital by yourself. 
I, they wanted to send me home same day. No, 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 no. Take it. You take tell time. them. You tell like, them. You need I, it. I feel terrible. I need, need all of night. the nurses. They I, wouldn't let me. <laughs> well, this is a laparoscopic. Was yours laparoscopic? Same. Okay. Well, no, then I'm going to I'm going to say, well, uh, my friend got to stay yes. all day. That's how I was after my second kid. My husband was like, hey, I might have to go to work. I'm like, go. Leave me here alone yes. in the hospital. <laughs> I am going to leave. When that thing hits 48 hours, you don't wheel me out of here yeah. before then. Oh, oh man. Take, <laughs> take full advantage. Um, okay, so we. I want to talk more mom stuff with you. But first, like just to cap off the career stuff, I'm wondering, so you've done a lot. Um, and I know you and I went to school for the same reason. Yep. And you have this like dream, you know, when you go to Mizzou from Dallas, you don't just go there because you want to like explore Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> you, you go there because you want to um, do whatever it is that you want to do. And Missouri is the best journalism school for it. So I'm wondering, is this like what you always were hoping for, what you're doing now? And um, do you feel like fulfilled in that regard? I do. Like I'm at the point, like, Getting to ESPN, I think, was the goal. Becoming a sideline reporter was the goal. That's always what I wanted to do. I didn't want to be on a desk and not be at the events and mm -hmm. not be at the games and not have that atmosphere. Amen. I also thought that it was like, that's what I was good at. I'm good at interviewing people and reading people and um, s seeing things that happen during the game. Um, and so I, because that was my strong suit, that's what I wanted to do. Now, would I like to be on bigger games? And I'd love to do tennis for ESPN and and host major tennis. Um, but I like where I am. I love, and that's mm -hmm. where I want to stay. But it would, you know, there is always something a little higher, more goals. Well, that's awesome. it's part of the personality. I think also, like, I, I I just I have to have something. Like even when I work out, like I have to have a goal. Like if I don't reach this many calories or this many miles, like there has to always still be something for me. And I think it's a lot of people in our industry because it's just those kind of people wouldn't be okay moving to uh, Charlottesville, Virginia for $17,000 if you weren't one of those goal seeking type people. So do you ever think about it? I feel like this <laughs> happens so much sooner with women. Like I'm already thinking about like mor my morbidity as far as my <laughs> career is concerned, okay. um, as is evidenced by my age and you know, whatever. But I always think, I mean, like I had a phone call today with someone and I was like, you know, I mean, I, at some point I'm going to become the old lady in the clubhouse. Yeah. It's okay to be mom age. But I'm, I'm, I'm pushing grandma age at this point with some of these guys. Um, so do you think about that? Cause I kind of like have a two year plan and a five year plan. You know, I, I kind of try yeah, to but I would say that and you almost three years ago, your plan was way different because didn't you almost retire? I almost retired. Yeah, you're right. So I don't know. I like, listen, if you had told me at 25 that I'd be 36 still doing this, like it, there were no 36 year olds then. I think if you look at TV yeah. now, like the, the women that we have on ESPN, they're all in their mid to upper thirties. Um, and, and I'm super proud of our company for having that way. Um, well, and for holding on, like, I will say that I, I, I admire that too about ESPN, Holly Rowe and um, Lisa Salters and, and Le yes, Lisa Salt. Yes, Lisa Salters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and Linda Cohn. Yeah. Susie Colbert, um, right? Yes, yeah, Susie Colbert. Yes, yeah. Susie Colbert. Linda Cohn. She's amazing. I already said her. Oh, sorry. You she was your first one. You weren't listening. <laughs> um, and who am I thinking? <laughs> Hannah Storm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, there's and Hannah Storm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hate you. Just <laughs> um, so yeah, no, that is letting, you know, not, not shoving those women yeah. out the door when they hit a certain age is now, that's a good thing. COVID does make you think like, well, now that there's no sports, like what would I do? And there, that's a big question. Like, I don't, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. You got nothing. Um, I had to do something. You even, even my husband was like, you, you're you going to have to do something. You could do it with yeah. an elf on the shelf. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> a professional elf on the shelf. Yes. Person. I F used to think that I was creative and F I was no chance. No. F the elf. I'm sorry. Like I like, I don't I know. We have a little bit of holiday talk cause we're all in different. I'm not, different I mean, I'm not and, about it. I, I just, I, I like the premise of the elf. It's very sweet. Mm -hmm. I just don't need to make a production about it every night. I just don't have it in me. I'm not, first of all, I'm not smart enough to do it. That's Second bullsh. of all, I don't think, no, there's no. Smart I'm not, enough I'm to not, make an elf look like he is floating around your house every night. It I doesn't can require do you being smart. It's just, I like, can't make a party scene. <laughs> no, or, it requires uh, planning. Like plan. you have that, to have the material. I'm not that, that, that is exactly right. I'm not, not smart enough. Uh, no, smart. I could Google enough that I could come up with something. They're selling kits now for like a hundred bucks for like every night of your elf. I'm like, this is getting well, out and then of I control. feel like you're that's you're cheating, but that's okay because I would cheat too. But I don't care. It is to my, cheat. my thing with the elf is like my we're not into it yet because my 
my kid like can't go to preschool and be like, what did your elf do today? Like, he's just, yeah, he's just not Enjoy there. It. So until then, we're just going to pretend that it doesn't exist. It's Enjoy. kind of like, like cookie butter. Like I've never had it. So in my yeah. mind, it tastes gross, you know? So until we, Ignorance until you, is bliss. yeah, until you open up the jar and the elf comes out, like we're going to keep that jar shut. <sighs> Close it tight <laughs> as long as you can. We do. I don't know how I mean. you got so far into the Easter Bunny that I they didn't know. Like, yeah, five years, <laughs> five years with my kids, no Easter Bunny. Hattie was five when she figured out there was. An, I don't know if the, they didn't know about it, but they just didn't know that it brought. Like he's gifts, at the mall, right? But it did, they didn't know he brought gifts to your house. Well, at what point Easter did you morning. introduce Santa? Santa's always been there. Okay. He's been, he's been God, there all along. I'm surprised Santa. you didn't try to hide he's, him. He's been there all along. Uh, <laughs> you guys don't hear anything. You don't hear any of your friends it's talking all about, about Jesus. Santa. Jesus, 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 <laughs> Jesus, birthday. Santa um, can't be hidden. No. So, no, I did. I just wrote it out. They never said anything. We were never a big Easter basket family growing up. And so I was like, I'm just going to ride this thing out. And then finally they were like, hey, Mom, all these kids at school say the Easter Bunny comes to their house and gives them a present, a basket of presents. And I was like, whoa, yes, <laughs> that's because you have to write the Easter Bunny a letter and tell him you want him to come to your house and give him your address. But doesn't it kind of give you an excuse to like not have to get them anything for a while? Uh, like you have to wait until the Easter. I want this. Nope. Got to wait. Got to wait. Two yeah. more months. You got to wait two more months. So you're like yes. applying the Santa to the Easter bunny. Yeah. Like I've never like, thought about that. Yeah. That's like when idea. the kid wants like, mom, you're gone. Can I, are you going to bring me home a surprise? Nope. Santa's still working. Yeah. yeah still well, the Easter bunny's it. watching. <laughs> now the, the Easter East. bunny's watching. No, the, no the problem with that is that like when I, like two years ago, I would have these like empty threats. If you don't listen to me, I Santa's know. not coming. Oh, we all know that. And then you got to be like. Obviously, Santa is coming, so I'm going to have to figure out. I got to stop doing that. You got to come up with new threats that, like, you're actually going to follow through, follow with. through with. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're bad at that in my household too. <laughs> yeah, the Easter Bunny we made five years. Then, then the first year it was like this big excited thing, and then the second year they found the Easter baskets in the top of my closet, and I was like, well, that's he's not real. Yeah, we last so, night had a panic because we talked all about the elf arriving because my son has older friends who like talk about it all the time. And so we knew that, you know, so-and-so two doors down already has their elf out. So Ryder's asking us all about it. I read him the book because that's how I got him to go up to bed. You know how you have to trick them into doing yeah. anything? Yeah. So I'm like, oh, you, you're on to the elf. Okay, well, let's go find the elf on the shelf book so I could get his ass in bed. And so then we read the book, blah, blah, blah. And then he even called in my husband to say, like, I can't wait to see where Buddy's going to be in the morning. And so we're like, yeah. And then we go, we open the closet with all of our Christmas stuff. And we both are like, where the F is this yeah. elf? And we could not find it. We opened up the little book, you know, where he's supposed to live. And yeah. it was empty. We go through everything kelly's like about to go to target and finally i looked in my stocking from last year i was Got trying it. so hard to be smart that yeah, i like outsmarted yeah. myself yeah i went so, up in the attic on christmas i mean on thanksgiving day night and found the stupid elf so i had a best friend from college send me an elf like this would be really fun oh, for you to do like, with your kids why do you hate me <laughs> two, two years ago that's like when my kid was two i to make was a like pie. i don't have to start doing this now i ain't no, doing it it's just like disney world if they're not begging for it i'm not taking them if yeah, but then not, when you go once, because we went last year for the first time, like that's the end of it. Because then every time I like, can we go see Mickey? When are we going to go see Mickey? Yeah, yeah. we're not. Oh dear. Unless they're begging for it. I'm not taking them. Yeah. It's like 10 grand. It's a lot. I'm it's not a lot. doing it. I'm it's not, a lot, not until they're sure. begging. If they're begging and they really want to go, I'm not going to crush their dreams. But if you're not I shouldn't begging say me that. Disney that. employs me. You should really go to this Disney is World. True. This is true. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Recover. Um, okay, so you've, you've gotten to this point in your career, and I love that you still have high goals and aspirations for yourself because sometimes when people do have kids, it changes that. And you say, well, like personally, you know, I never had a goal to like be doing afternoon radio, <laughs> but it just kind of happened because that's how life worked out. And with the kids being here in Dallas, yada, 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 my husband had to be here in Dallas. So I'm just wondering like how, you know, the kids and having the kids has affected your day to day when it comes to your career. And there are, there's a ton of struggles that all yeah. of a sudden you have to deal with. It's a much more 50, 50 parenting. Like, you know, are you going to be here then? And you're putting a lot more on your husband. So how do you guys deal yeah, I mean, with it's like today that? to do this? Like we met at the kids dentist and like, I took them to the dentist and dad met them there and they took them home. I, it's, it's like flying by the seat of your pants all day long. I, the the hardest part for me once I had my kids was I I would have dropped everything and said yes to doing any kind of work assignment. And then after I had my son, I was working for the Tennis Channel. They're like, hey, can you come in and fill in? And I was like, yeah, 
hold on. There's these humans. I've I got to mm-hmm. find a babysitter. And then I couldn't it's find hard. a baby. We yeah. were living in LA. It's part of the reason we moved here. And like that blew my mind. That was like, poof, like I had to say no to something. So that's really hard. I've had opportunities that like when I do college world series, that's 16 days on the road. That's hard. It's part of the reason why I left baseball. Cause mm-hmm. I didn't want to do 10 days on the road. Um, I can do, you know, that's if, if it's college world series and it's 16 days, that's one time a year yeah. and the kids can come up for a little bit. That's different. But I mean, it is, you know, I've had other opportunities where it's like to cover some other stuff and it's like, Hey, can you go to Rome for two weeks? And it's like, that doesn't I know, exist. I know. I know. Imagine like, if it were 25 year old, you <laughs> can you go to Rome for two so weeks. I was like, well, why don't you take the kids? Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> It's no, the worst that's not so ever. It's so hard. And you yeah. feel like if you say and no, you're working like, the whole time, that's like, yeah. people are like, oh, do your family come and join you on the road on road trips? I'm like, I'm working. Like I leave the hotel at, yeah. you know, one thirty two, and I don't get home till 1130. So they get four hours with me, five hours with me in the morning. Like, and then they're like completely out of their element right. and, and their yeah. school. You know, I'm not taking an 18 month old overseas to Rome yeah. and having her up all night. So, so that part has changed. I will say like, I feel my sense of purpose, that sounds so like, what? it's fine. Sense of purpose. We, we talk like, but that. like, uh, yeah. you know, like I want to kick ass for my daughter, yeah. you know, like mm-hmm. I want, I want her to see like mom does it all. And she broke barriers or what, you know, like this, that's super important to me. I came from two parents who worked really, really hard for us. And so I have always wanted to work and continued to work. So now instead of like working, I mean, there are personal goals, but part of it's like, I want my daughter to always see that I work. I want my son to see that mom always works so that when he wants to find a wife or something that he wants someone that has, you know, those same kind of aspirations. So that's kind of where it shifted and it takes a lot like our calendar that's all color coordinated and like getting my husband to figure out how to use the phone calendar so that we all see each other's mm-hmm. schedule. Oh, and they never see those emails, do they? Husbands. Yeah. I'm like, did you see? I sent you on the planner. You're like, what are you talking about? And there's, there's just some like getting used to like, I will always be the one that does the grocery. Like I used to get really angry about it. Like I work and I do 90% of the oh, stuff yeah. at the home. Know the argument. Yeah. But yeah. you know, I'm, I, he's not going to put away the kids clothes. He's not going to do the grocery. And like, he would if I asked, but then I'd have to sit here redo and redo it. Yeah. So I, it, it takes some saying like, yeah, I, I am still going to be the full-time mom and a full-time worker and right. just have to be okay with that. Yeah. We just have to learn how to operate on like little sleep mm-hmm. yeah. and not much free time. You yeah. know, that's, that's the hardest the, thing. The difference now. You're not going to read the schedule from the preschool that tells you to wear the pilgrim <laughs> oh. hat on Thursday. Or that it's yeah. like funky you hair are. day. Yeah. Right. But yeah. then if you forget to tell them to wear the pilgrim hat, then no, it's no mom's dad, fault. Dad, yeah. dad looks mom's at fault. you like, how did you forget? Right. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> oh, it's always, if something, yeah, if something school related goes wrong or is forgotten, it's never the it's, that's, it's always on it's, mom. Yeah. And I'm we, sure there are some exceptions out there, but the vast majority. We were it's on, on mom. F- FaceTime was my first football game this season. And like we're FaceTiming on the way to school. And I see that my son is wearing the same outfit he wore yesterday. <laughs> and I was like, oh <laughs> my gosh. And I like put it on Twitter and I had all these dads there be like, it's okay. Teachers are totally going to know that it was dads right, on duty. For sure. Like it's just, it's fine. So <laughs> my, don't you wonder how that happens? Like, did you get it out of dirty clothes? Oh no. He probably just slipped in it. Right. He's in the shower. <laughs> For he sure. Goes, no, he goes, it was on the table. And I'm like, where you left it After last night. It Did you not look at the kid yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> Henry, uh, Mike sent Henry to, when he was three, to uh, church preschool with, you know, the picture of Farrah Fawcett of her, like with her big flowy hair <laughs> yeah. and like a red one piece on with like some nips, I think, hang, not <laughs> hanging out, but like basically yeah. she's Boobs cold. Hanging out. She's cold. She's cold. <laughs> and he sent her to, he sent Henry to school with a blue t-shirt with a picture of Farrah Fawcett. I was wondering where that was going. I, was I like, know, like, did he put her, did, she, did he put him in a jumpsuit? So my, my sister-in-law got it for Henry kind of as a joke. And then he sent him to three-year-old church preschool in this t-shirt and I'm like, like one of the teachers sent it to me. I was like, hey, uh, what's going on? Obviously, you're on the road. I was like, yeah, yes. on the road. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> on you're on the road. The road. Yes. Yeah. 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 I was, <laughs> you, I've also gotten a lot better of like saying, hey, you need to do this. And I like, I commend my husband. There's not many like husbands out there be okay, like 
wife being gone three days out of the week. Yeah. yeah. But I'll, it'll have to be like, I need you to do this today. Yeah. And I was really bad about that for the first couple of years. And I actually had a friend who just had a baby. She, and she was like, I, I don't know if I should start getting a babysitter. I, I'm really proud that I've been doing this all by myself. And I'm like, I, I get that you're proud of that. But at some point, like, it's also about survival. Yeah. And, you know, like, if you have to have help, then you ask for help. Oh, yeah. I've, yeah. Had, I've had help for uh, the, my kids' entire lives. I've had a nanny two days a week. Yeah. And it, she makes our world go round and it's there okay. is no shame nope. in that game. It's okay to ask for help. And yes, I think we do have to give a shout out to the husbands. I don't mean to bash them because <laughs> all three yeah, of us have yeah. jobs for sure. where we're away oh, and we have yeah. weird hours. And they're obviously like badass husbands yes. too. So yeah. a shout out to them. Um, and we talked about a couple dad fails. And I know that you're working on a project. Um, if And I want to give you the platform to talk about that a little bit. And also just... Um, Mom fails. They're real. They're a real thing. And I have a couple new ones for you that I've been <laughs> taking notes on. <laughs> you know what's so funny is I got, so I had this idea. Um, my best friend and I, like we, when you go out to dinner with women, like, what do you do? Like you drink wine, you talk about all the ways that you effed up that week. Mm -hmm. And so my mom was like, oh, I have so many from you. And so we started talking about it. And I was like, what a great idea for a book. So I'm in the process of like getting them all now and the pictures and the ideas that like kind of a coffee table book of like what a great baby shower gift to give yeah, someone awesome. to like normalize the idea like we're all doing stupid things. And mine is about like my kid locking me out and like Oh my God, going. that happened to me too in my robe. Oh, same to <laughs> me, but it was in a car and it was running. <laughs> mine was out of my house and I couldn't get back in. We didn't have a key. Yeah. And so then he started going through all the butcher knives and all these things. So, the, you know, so I, I wanted to normalize it. And it's been a ton of fun, like reading these other people's stories, complete strangers that have submitted things, Olympians that have. So like, we're all like, oh, cool. we're all the same. And that's yeah. what I wanted people to know. So it's been... It's been a lot of fun. And I, I owe you, I just for the record, <laughs> I, I owe was you. was like, I don't have any I, fails. Oh, please. I'm perfect. I was like, there's so many I can't <sighs> pick. Listen but to you, our podcast. You, you can hear all ever, the fails. You can't ever think of any, but yeah. this conversation has inspired a number. <laughs> and I will, I will send you. Trust me. I said the same thing. I was like, oh God, I don't know. I got to get back to you. And then I'm going through my life. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have one like every day. Yeah. I just need to write them down. So I have two for you that I'll propose. And then um, I can send them to you in written form too. Sounds but I have good. to share these. <laughs> so the other day, and you guys know, like... So at the end of a long work week or whatever, like it was a Friday afternoon. Oh, and this wasn't last Friday when I forgot to pick my kids up from school, but that's also a mom fail. <laughs> Kel, I thought Kelly was picking them up and blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh my God, I'm sitting there alone in my yard with a margarita, just like living <laughs> the dream. And then he texts I'll me. I'll be right so, over. Yeah, I'm like, shit. Okay, well, so that's another one. Now I have three. But um, we're all sitting there like with my neighbors kind of having a little happy hour and Ryder and the kids are over there playing and you just... There's, no one told me there was so much getting up when you're a parent, right? Like you can't sit down. Yeah. Never. There's no sitting down. So I'm finally sitting there relaxed and Ryder comes over in COVID world and has like all this snot coming out of his mouth. Or sorry, not his mouth, his nose. That would be weird. <laughs> that would be really weird. Um, and so he's just, you know, playing and all the parents. And so it's just this weird like vibe where if your kid has a runny nose right now, it's like, oh, oh. my God, stop yeah. the presses. Like every, everything. Much halts. less sneezing. Yes. Yeah. And so God bless a oh, cough. Sneeze, I know. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, in this nice conversation and I'm like God what do I do? I don't want to like go all the way I was being so lazy and I saw a piece of paper and so I get the piece of paper I'm like this will work and like I kind of like don't want anyone else to see what I'm doing any of the parents I'm like Ryder just take this so he takes the piece of paper and he wipes his nose and scrapes the shit oh, out of it. No. Like, there's like a little bit of blood and he just loses it he's like Mom! I'm like oh God. Gave me sand paper to wipe my nose. And then nose. Kelly looks at me. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, I just wanted to sit for like just a second and not have to go get the Kleenex. So there I am giving my son a sharp sh sheet of paper to wipe his <laughs> nose with, with so I can like have a drink. And I'm thinking, okay, I've got to tell Chris Button about that one. That's a good one. <laughs> That's good. Oh, the other anything one. that involves like um, some sort of like weird body fluid or um, mm -hmm. poop or vomit makes Poop the book. and vomit. They're just yeah. like... Everyone's got to have a poop yeah. mom fail. The other and one is, do you guys mel do you guys melatonin use melatonin for your kids ever? If you so need we did, and then <gasps> I am shocked. Shut it! Shut that it! You would do something? No, I'm just kidding. Be no. careful! It backfires. Okay. Okay. Because tell me. We I've never used it for for my kids. Well, my my God bless my son is we. He's not okay. weird. Yeah. He's no, no, has not. always had a strange. He has different sensory deals. Yeah. Like okay. now he sleeps with the lights on. Totally on. Totally on. Okay. He's always, he crawled out of the crib at 18 months. He's always been diff difficult sleeper. If he's sleepers. sleeping, 
who cares, right? Yeah. The lights are on. Yeah. I don't care. Um, how he falls asleep with it on, I have no idea, but whatever. It, yeah, it works whatever now. Works. Um, but he had a hard time falling asleep, so we would give him melatonin. If you take it too often, it creates like nightmares, like okay. vivid nightmares. Okay. So we would give it to him, and then oh, at dear. 1 a.m., he'd be like, Mommy. So we oh. had, now we use it like if we transition like to a hotel or like yeah. you know, things yeah. like that. We're like, yeah, I know he's not going to sleep well, but if you do it every night, that's the caution. That's it can what create nightmares. I recently just told my husband, I was like, we should not be doing this like every so night. Is it every, is it just like a vitamin, like a gummy? It's just it's a gummy natural. vitamin. It's all natural. Oh yeah, for sure. You yeah. know, no big deal. Um, once he found out about him, he's like, this is amazing. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I, I gave one to Anna. I don't think she's too young. I mean, whatever. It's all natural. Too late now. <laughs> yeah, too late now. I gave one to her one night and she's standing there in the crib and I kind of looked away and I looked back and I assumed she like chewed it, you know? Um, and then we just like go on for lives. We go to sleep the next morning. I wake up and I'm like, God, you've got this big knot in your hair. Like she's got the bed oh. head we talked about. And I'm like, holy shit. She dropped the melatonin in her hair and it was there all night long. Like it was the gummy. melatonin gummy in her hair. And then it made a big old knot. I'm like, Did you have to cut it out? The, am I the worst mom? I mean, like no. that is, I no. didn't cut it out. No, I just way worse moms. Yeah. <laughs> but way worse. those two things like kind of happened I thought you were going to tell me back. like you called 911 because she like choked on it or something. I thought the well, cat was going to eat it and he was like passed out she, she, two days. She, yeah. <laughs> Blueberry. She, yeah. Ryder was making her laugh the other night and she did choke a little bit on one. So I, I think we're going to cut back the melatonin. <laughs> yeah. Before the nightmare. We had, so I was in Boise this past year uh, for the potato bowl and I come out of the game. My husband like never wants to bother me when I'm on the road. And so I have a text from my neighbor. It's like, is everything okay? And I was like, uh. Don't you love that? They always text you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, why? Uh, then she doesn't answer. So I call her and she was like, I don't want to alarm you, but there's an ambulance and a fire truck oh, outside shit. your house. Would oh you my God. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, let me call my husband straight to voicemail, straight to voicemail. Straight and you're to at no, the no, game? No. In Boise. Oh, oh, I just got done with the game. So uh. the game's over. So I call her back. I was like, he's not answering. She's like, do you want me to go over there? I was like, yeah. And so I, she was just like walking over and she's like, Mario. And he's like, tell her I'll call her back. Uh -uh. And I'm like dying now. I'm like, what is what going is on that my youngest little girl choked on a piece of a tortilla oh, no. and he tried like getting it out. And I guess when he did it, he must have scratched her throat because then she was coughing up blood Oh dear! and she was fine. And I'm Choking. glad that he at least called 911. But like when your neighbor's like, is everything OK? Yeah. And you're like, and you're hey, none of them have away. your yeah. husband's number. They always text <laughs> yeah. the mom. I'm yeah. Like, uh, I have no idea what you're talking well, about. Well, Whereas your husband doesn't want to bother you on the road. My husband, I remember I was in Baltimore. This was when Hattie was still little and she had the puke aversion in the car. And I always try to and set up, like, too. I don't know if you guys do this. Like when I'm going to be gone for 10 days or whatever, I set up a, a respite in the middle. That's like, he, they can, he can take the kids to Graham where my stepmom and my stepsister yeah. are like, they love to have him. Like I will make sure he's got, a break. A couple of days to yeah. like An oasis. regain his composure. <laughs> and so he calls me. I mean, it's six o'clock in Baltimore, about to go on the air. And he's like, well, I mean, Hattie just puked all over the car seat on their way to Graham. And I'm like, OK, so well, <laughs> what just, do you want me just, to do about it? <laughs> we're just over here on the side of the road. I was like, OK, yep, let's go ahead and let Ava know we're on our way. We're going to be coming in hot with a puke seat. I'm like, OK. And so he's like, I'm just going to throw this thing away. I mean, it's not salvageable. I'm like, that thing was like $350. Like, do you realize how expensive car seats are? He's like, I mean, this thing can't be saved. And I was like, <laughs> it can be. Ava will be ready with a, a hose. She'll hose it down. It'll be fine. No, nope. Ava, your mom? It's good. My stepmom. Okay. <laughs> and I'll throw it away. I'm just going to throw it away. I'll just get a new one. And I'm like, we can't just get a new car seat every, every time. time the kid pukes in the car seat. Yeah. Like, that's just not the way it works. But I'm like, okay, well, it's almost showtime. So like, like what there, do you want me to do? Yeah. Is there something? I, do you want me to send like roadside assistance? <laughs> like, I don't, we, he was like, well, we're just here on the side of the road. I'm like, <laughs> again, AAA cover puke. Okay. Like, like, what, am, what am I supposed to do? I've had that so many times. So it's not with the kids. It's with my husband. Okay. Like, um, I'll be in South Carolina, 6 a.m. Hey, uh, I can't find my wallet. Oh. I, uh, Are you serious? I'm half a, con a country away. Huh? What? Well, also, why do you need your wallet? Well, how am I going to eat today? Well, all that stuff <laughs> that's in the pantry that I just bought before I left. Yeah. And that's I'm not like, as good as Jersey Mike. Yeah, then I'll be like, I, you had Thai food last night. How'd you pay for that? Oh, I got to go. Favor, <laughs> an app. Yeah. 
Yeah, he I has broken like- the, the the dryer and the washer while I was on the road in one fail swoop because he put both appliances, three loads worth in the washer oh. and it didn't drain. So then he put it soaking wet in the washer. And so then he's like, what do I do again? I'm half country right. away. So he called my mom oh. and just dropped it off. Oh, and she did the rest. Stop oh, no. it. That's ridiculous. I feel like with, with with husbands, a lot of times they just kind of let you know what's going on, so they know how hard oh, is, how so, hard they're yeah. working when you're gone. So, I mean, <laughs> I get all this. I know puke cleanup. And you're like, uh, I just wanted to let you I know that I cleaned puke uh, today. Yeah, yeah. I did the laundry. Meanwhile, I'll come home to a, like the biggest, massive, <laughs> most massive load in the dryer. But he started no folding. It, Started in the, in the washer and then transferred it to the dryer. And it's like, that's big time. Did you know, same way, did, did the dishes, pushed, put a soap pod in there and then hit start. And it's like, did the dishes? No, they're still in there. <laughs> don't leave them in there. I don't the want to come home to the a dishwasher dryer, that's the dishes. full. I we don't know. use the dishwasher. I got conned into that early in our relationship. He, when we first moved in together, he was like, the, the dishwasher's broken. And he's like, we had to hand wash everything. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> What's happening? So, you don't use a dishwasher? No. P- period? <laughs> okay. No. You're making is, life harder for yourself. Why, wait. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so we had this dishwasher. He said it was broken and we had just moved in together. We had been dating and then there was like a recall and I was like, oh, well maybe the guy can come fix it since there's a recall. The, the guy comes to fix the dishwasher. My, hu- my fiance at the time was gone. And he's like, um, the, the dishwasher works fine. I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, no, my my fiance has said it's been broken for the last two years. That's why we had to hand wash everything. And he's like, he's lying to you. Stop. So I got him. What is happening? Just, my husband likes everything hand washed. Oh, my was, gosh. He Chris. washes the dishes. Okay, but he's, he's going to do it. He does all he of it. He washes them, but okay. he doesn't put them away. But he puts them in, in this drying, drying rack, rack on okay. the top of the thing. He gets annoyed that, like, we only really use, like, couple plates and okay. a couple dishes so why would we fill up this thing wait till it's all full then wash it have so to have, have to more dishes it. hey confession time so okay. My, okay first of all my husband gets pissed off because i like to wash the dishes before we put them in the yeah. dishwasher he's like oh look at me over here washing dishes before i put them in the dishwasher he gets so annoyed he's like why do we have a dishwasher if we're gonna wash the dishes i think but, every husband said that sentence at i was some like point in their life. i don't think our dishwasher is capable of it's like why do you clean for the maid this? right yes yeah. And so, but I will say once the dishwasher gets unloaded, if there's like three dishes, I'll just hand wash because it's <laughs> so pristine in there. It's just <laughs> so clean and so pretty and there's no need to muck it up. And then like Henry will come in and put like a half a bowl of milk cereal in there. And I'm like, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah. You because then to- when do you decide? Like, do you keep hand washing? So you I mean, keep, you got to like, have at, at point- least five dishes to put directly in. There has to be five dishes to put in if I'm going to, Put them in the dishwasher. If you're going to stop the hand. If, so only after like a big meal will you big meal. So turn last to the night dishwasher. We had spaghetti. Last night oh, had that's a dishwasher yeah. situation. Oh, yeah. It's a dishwasher situation. Yeah. Oh, um, man. We've used ours three times and it's like after Thanksgiving. This is mind blowing. <laughs> I can't. I, I, but now I'm like so used to it. The only thing I yeah. don't like is like he doesn't put them away. So he like plays Jenga with our Pottery Barn like right. plates on. on Do you the, have to dry them or does the drying rack dry them? The dry, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's fine. That's if fine. you're not drying them. Yeah. It's the and same then I just get the it? same plate that's in the drying rack and then feed no. it to the kids. My kids wear, like you said, the Jay story about him wearing the same. I washed, I do a load of laundry every day. It's one, it's the, really? yeah, every that, day. that is my nightmare. Every, uh, no, because people talk about my girlfriend, Lisa, she, her, every Sunday, it's like, oh, laundry day. And I'm like, laundry day. <laughs> that's me. Like seven days. You've gone seven days without doing laundry. I can only imagine how long it's going to take you to fold that shit. <laughs> so that's why you do it every day because you don't want to fold. Yeah, because I don't want to do all of it at one time. Like, yeah. let's space this out. I, I did come back from the road this week, and I had just done Jace's laundry, and it was in the dryer. I'm the worst about just leaving it in the dryer and, like, pushing start 18 different times. And then it had gotten transferred into his closet on the floor. <laughs> no. And I'm no. like, when you drop that on the floor, are you just thinking it magically goes onto the hangers? Or are you purposely being like, I'm going to make Chris do this after she's been on the road? So is this a question for Mario or Jace? <laughs> Mario. Okay. Yeah. It's Just the great. same as putting dishes right next to the sink when they're dirty. I'm like, who are you putting them there for? Yeah. 
Your mom doesn't live here. But and we, if she did, she doesn't want to do it either. But we love our yeah. husband yes, and no, our kids. But my, this is my thing. It's 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 our fault because like it is. because my husband he was 35 when we got married. So like he lived on his own. He did all these things. And then somehow I just started doing things for them. And then they just And that's done. you know what? Oh, yeah. I think we've solved that's why they marry us. Yes. They just want someone to do their shit around the house. Do all their shit around the house. <laughs> Except better. for cook. Like Yeah, I don't I do mean, that either. Yeah. Oh, I do. You do. I am the grilling. Congratulations. But I actually I enjoy can, that part. I can grill a little bit. Yeah. I don't like to. I hate cooking. I, I hate. like that. I don't like the getting the food. I don't. Well, like it's hard. You're right. Well, earlier you said you have to have a plan. That's the problem with yeah. it. And that's my problem is I never have a plan. I never have the food that I need for the plan. I like Therefore, to cook before COVID. Cook. And then COVID happened. And I was like, I've never made so many freaking meals in my yeah. life. And then it was like out to dinner every night. We're helping support local oh, restaurants absolutely. every night. Yeah, I don't I don't like it. I told Julie the story like when my husband was like, you know what would be fun is if you learn to make homemade cornbread. And I was like, <laughs> That's hilarious. You see those little yellow packets? I dump two of them in a bowl. I put two eggs and a little bit of milk and we're all good. Okay, yeah. okay so good. that reminds Everybody me before it. we wrap up, we have to have a little bit of a pie post game show. I challenged yeah. Emily oh, to right. make a pie for Thanksgiving and she like hated she texted me that she didn't even want to be my friend anymore the night kidding. the night before th well I didn't sleep that night I was Stop like Emily doesn't it. want to be my friend you're so ridiculous <laughs> how did it go your so pie I was like, I'm going to the effing store on Thanksgiving Eve I'm going to the store to pick up ingredients for a pumpkin pie which by the way are like five there's like five ingredients yeah. for a pumpkin pie and yeah. that's with homemade crust I made homemade crust too and, See, so, and you're so see, proud like, now. like that's above and beyond. I yes. was, I, I felt like, I, well, it was part of our deal. It was a pie. We had to oh, make the, oh, okay. yes. Wait, did you make one? So I mm -hmm. made what, but she didn't make pumpkin. She made apple, mm -hmm. but that's which okay. Is, which is harder. <laughs> oh, really? Um, yeah. yeah. yeah I had, I like had a to, lattice top thing. Right? I oh, had you to, did the lattice. Yes, thing, I yeah. did the. You have a, you know the name for it too, mm. lattice top. Yeah. And I had to chop up like six apples into oh. cubes. Six. Yeah. Did you have to chop up six apples I didn't into cubes? Not. You no. put stuff in a blender <laughs> and then pour it in a pie crust. There was a food processor involved. Okay. Yeah. It's big time. Well, I didn't really have one. It was, I have this like little mini thing, but it worked I out. I get fine. proud anytime I actually so I have proud. to use my food processor. And Henry actually tasted it. I didn't. I guess hey, I you didn't even. I tasted a little bit. It was fine. You know, like I'm not a big pie? pumpkin pie yeah. person, but he he said it was fine. He was like, yeah. "It's great, mom." Well, you know, after all of that work, I was so happy to see. Like, we just had this crazy rush and outpouring of people voting. I think we had four votes. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I mean, was it all based on looks? You won yes. three to one. I think it was like four to zero. Uh, yeah, you didn't even get your family members. You know to what? No. Uh, I didn't even know we had a vote. Sorry. <laughs> I fudged it. There were only three votes. It was two to one. I added one when I just said oh. that. So it was two to one, but I won on based on just looks. Congratulations. Yeah, and nobody. So as we can see, the pie challenge was a huge <laughs> success. You leftovers, and I could have decided. <laughs> yes, Julie we should have. Like, yes. Chris, this is us trying to social media. We're like, oh, let's engage. We make a pie. Yes, and let's have people vote. And, yeah. and we had three Three votes, but it was fun, and now we can say that we've made a it pie. Was, uh, yeah, we can. And Adam's coming back this week, so God bless our social yes, media game. Yes, since he's been gone. <laughs> yes, yes sure. we need help. Chris, this has okay. been so much fun. I know, thank I know. you. We could do it if we had another bottle of wine. We could do it for another hour and a yeah, half. Yeah, we could. You'll have okay. to come back sometime. Yes, for yes, sure. I would love to. This was um, like the, the highlight of my week. So oh much good. fun. Well, we love you. We're proud of you. Okay, what do you have coming up this weekend so people can watch? Yeah, tell and us. So I can watch. Uh, yeah, I always so like TCU. finding your games. Oh. Your husband's a TCU it grad, is. right? Yeah. yeah. So Oklahoma State at TCU uh, this Saturday. You get 11, to work with Mark Cohen. I do. I, I Mark know. Cohen. He's the best. He is he really, so nice. He really is, he is the best. like literally the nicest human on the planet. He is. Um, That's awesome. So yeah. you'll be like local too. And so I will. Yeah. To travel so if we go weekend. to the game, I'll come say hey. Sounds good. It's always like it's an hour away. Should I get a hotel? Everyone's like, yes, get a hotel room for Friday night. Yeah. Are you going to come stay with me? I don't have kids. I'm dropping my kids off this weekend. If you want to come nice. stay with me. Okay, well, Just I won't come. Plants, yeah. I'm come. Slumber I won't make, I won't force you to make a pie. There I is. promise. Yes. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. If you want to stay in the fort, I got a place for you. Awesome. Okay, so this is it. Episode 38 in the books. Mm -hmm. God, we rambled for a long time, but it we was sure so did. fun. We sure did. It was so fun. So many different topics to talk about with I know. You. Okay, so we could do our signature. <laughs> yeah, you want to do it? the peace signs and we say mom game out. You, okay. We'll let you do the honors. It. Okay, ready, set, go. Mom game out. Thank you.